Okay, we are going on to uh, section 4.4, uh, particle in a uniform, uh, particle in uniform circular motion. Uh, let's uh, share the PowerPoint. Uh, so imagine a car going around, uh, going around uh, on a roundabout. Most roundabouts that I see are actually go uh, counterclockwise, but that's okay. Uh, we'll take this car going uh, um, clockwise at a constant velocity. Uh, the little red arrow indicates its uh, velocity and it's uh, going, um, basically going around in circles. Is it accelerating? Now, even if it's going at a constant speed, a constant uh, velocity, well, I have to say constant feet speed because if it, if, if it were a constant velocity, it would be going in a straight line. Uh, but if it's uh, the magnitude of the velocity is, is, it remains the same, but its direction is changing, then it's accelerating. So the acceleration... Uh, this car going around in a circle, just as we said, and you know, we talked about the accelerator, accelerator pedal, the brake, and the steering wheel. The steering wheel can cause an acceleration. So if this is going in a, a circle at a constant uh, uh, speed, then it is accelerating. Um, the acceleration is equal to the change in velocity uh, over the same period of time. Uh, so the the velocity can be speeding up, it can be slowing down, or it can be changing direction. So an acceleration is equal to the change in the velocity uh, over the time period. Okay, now let's look at this. Um, let's look at this. Uh, we have a position uh, in the the black. We show the um, r initial, r final. The vector has moved. Delta r is the change in the position vectors. And uh, we can see the velocity at A is kind of going uh, up towards the uh, upper right. On B, it's uh, down towards the lower right. Uh, you could say that at A, it's uh, uh, east, northeast direction. And at B, it's uh, uh, east, southeast direction. Uh, but if we draw, if we isolate the uh, v initial and v final uh, velocity vectors, we'll see the, the delta v, the change in velocity. Suki, you need to, be, you need to get down. Uh, sorry about the interruption. Okay, so delta v, uh, so we notice that the, the, the angles are the same. Uh, <laughs> the angles are the same, and the uh, uh, the ratio of the r initial and r final are the same, uh, so you have uh, you have similar triangles. Well, when you have similar triangles, you can you can form a ratio the uh, delta v over v and delta r over r. Um, they're they're the same. Now we can solve if we solve for delta v, we'll get uh, delta v equals v over r. Uh, times delta r, um, and so the uh, the average acceleration is delta v over uh, delta v over delta t. The magnitude of delta v over delta t that is uh, the acceleration. But we use the um, delta v equal the v over r delta r. We substitute it, and you'll see that that the Average velocity is v over r delta r over delta t. Well, what 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 is delta r over delta t? Is delta t approaches zero in the limit? Well, it is velocity. So the uh, acceleration, um, the acceleration, and we use the subscript c. The centripetal acceleration is v squared r. Let's go back and look. Uh, we have accept the average acceleration is equal to V over R times delta R over delta T, and as the limit as delta R, uh, as delta T, the limit of delta R over delta T, as delta T approaches uh, zero is V, and so we end up with V squared over R, um, and that is the acceleration 
Um, the centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared over r. And remember that because we'll use this, uh, we'll use this equation quite often. Um, so now, a, a particle is going around a circle of radius r. Uh, what is one trip around the circle? Well, it's 2 pi r. The circumference of any circle is 2 pi times the radius. Um, and how long does it take to go around once? Well, that's uh, what, what we call it is the period t. So the time it takes to go around the circle once is uh, t. So the distance it travels is 2 pi r, one, one circumference, divided by the time it takes. That gives you the velocity, uh, so the, the uh, magnitude of the velocity, 2 pi r divided by t. Um, so t is called the period. Uh, here we've just swapped out the t for the v. It, you could do that exchange mathematically. The period is 2 pi r divided by the velocity. So in other words, if you if you have you've got the same circle, if you if um, you go if you increase your velocity by two, then your period reduces to one half. In other words, if you increase your velocity, it only takes you half the, if you double your velocity, it only takes you half the time to go around the, the same circle. Uh, what if we slow down our velocity to where it, it's, it's one half of the initial velocity? Well, it's gonna take you twice as long um, time-wise to go around the entire circle. So if, you, if your velocity goes down by one half, your period will go up by two. Uh, okay, and now omega, uh, omega is our uh, omega is our um, angular velocity. Omega is the angular velocity. Now let's look at the very first in the upper corner here. Uh, we, we have two pi over t. You'll see that uh, omega is v divided by r, if we, move, if we divide both sides of this first equation by r, we'll get vr equal, v divided by r equals omega, I mean, v divided by r is equal to two pi t, well, the v divided by r is equal to omega. Uh, omega is our angular velocity. We'll get more about angular velocity in later chapters. Um, uh, and I, I just gave it to you. Uh, omega is equal to 2 pi uh, times V over 2 pi R equals V over R. Uh, so V is equal to R omega. Omega is equal to V divided by R, and V is equal to R omega. Okay, uh, so centripetal, if V is equal to R omega, then the centripetal acceleration is v squared r, so it's r omega squared divided by r. Well, you have r squared divided by r, you end up with a single r, um, and you end up with r omega squared. So the acceleration, uh, besides being acceleration, can be expressed as uh, v squared divided by r, or it can be uh, expressed as r times omega squared. Okay, uh, quick quiz. A particle moves in a circular path of radius r, uh, with, uh, what is that, speed, uh, it's hidden here, uh, with speed v. It then increases its speed to 2v while traveling along the same circular path. The centripetal acceleration of the particle has changed by what factor? Okay, so um, acceleration is v squared over r. Um, so if, if, if at first it was v squared over r, now it's 2v. So v squared, I mean the velocity squared, if it's 2v, now it's 4v squared. So the, the centripetal acceleration of the particle has changed by what factor? By a factor of four. It's increased by four because we're using 2v. Remember, centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. Well, if, v is now 2v, then it's 4v squared. So it's increased by a factor of four. Um, 
a particle moves in a circular path of radius r with speed v, it then increases its speed to 2v while tra traveling uh, along the same circular path. By what factor has the period of the particle changed? Um, so the, the period uh, is now, if, if the period is, is um, get off, <laughs> excuse me, get off of that. Uh, it, now it, it's, it's one half, 0. 0.5. Uh, let's go back and look at our, um, which one of these do I want to look at? Uh, if the T is if V, look at the little look at the little blue box. If uh, V is now two V, um, if you double the V, then the T goes down by a half. That's what I wanted to look for. Sorry about the distraction of the cat. Uh, my cats love me, and they want to be around me. Uh, so it, uh, it decreases um, the period decreases by 0.5 um and let's see is that uh no we're still on the same uh, the same subject so uh, centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared r the period is equal to 2 pi r divided by the velocity that's the period you if you switch the v and the t you'll see that the velocity is 2 pi o 2 pi r divided by t that's just the distance around the circle divided by the time period that it uh, takes to get there and then omega uh, is equal to 2 pi uh, over t and uh, I think that's uh, yes tangential and radial acceleration is the next one and we'll get to that uh, we'll stop here